Go outside. Hi lovely people. So it's still Halloween, September to Christmas. Enjoy Halloween. Um, I attempted to make these slightly devilish horns. They're a bit uneven and rugged and by the time I've got them painted, hopefully, I'm going to get a nice lava effect to them. Fingers crossed that will work. But then I thought, well, I had to learn how to do horns from about a thousand different videos. So I tried showing you. And in true Blue Peter fashion, here's part of one I made earlier. No, basically I've got some liquid latex. I've got some really liquidy liquid latex. You don't want to be using quite a thick one like they're on unless you've got a thinner. So here's something that's like a craft and hobby, a bit cheaper style because it's actually easier to use. You're trying to mimic a paper mache style moulding technique. And these masks you can get for like a pound or stupidly cheap. I mean, they're not that pretty, but they're, they're really good to get this curved texture. If you can't be bothered to go get one or you don't want to spend out on the whatever money it's going to cost you to get it, use anything that the latex doesn't stick to. To test this, stick latex to it. If it doesn't stick, you found something that it doesn't stick to. Round of applause for obviousness. Yay! Right, let's get started. Okay, so I've got my tissue. You can use blue roll, newspaper, anything. I just have a vast quantity of blue tissue for some reason. Which is why everything is blue. Um, I'm using some of my plasticine that I use for modelling and getting some ideas, but to basically put this on so I've got something to push onto. But anything round at all that isn't going to be affected by the latex. So don't use anything that's food. Because if you've got latex on it and then someone eats it, it just... Okay, so first things first get some blue tissue and you want to try and create a cross hatching effect when you put something down you want to try and get like i'm really lucky this has got lines in it but you want to get opposites and that makes it actually stronger because the natural texture will actually be better you don't want too much latex especially the skin stuff it's really easy to put loads on and you just end up making a complete and utter mess so for that one dip of latex i've now got enough on my fingers and enough on this thing that i can actually do two bits of tissue which seems like it's going to be really dry because you have so many layers to do, you don't want to OTT build it up. If you think it's getting a bit dry, just get a little bit later to the down. Just rub it over it, rather than dipping new bits in. Then the aim is to basically create little circles and build your start of your fold. So just fold something into a rough square and then fold in the corners. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle. You could probably cut out circles, but that would mean effort and I'm really lazy. So, so again, you want to create as many circly shapes as possible. Because I'm doing this dark fairy style look. I don't want it to have these thick chunky ones like scary different horns. So I'm actually going to get thinner circles and keep screwing up. You could probably do, again, another hundred layers and you'll still end up going mad. So you just kind of judge it as you go along and keep doing it until you kind of feel happy with what you've done. As you get to the layer, you do end up with this kind of, well, hexagonal shape or whatever shape you've made. So just dip some, another flat piece in and stick it over the whole thing and then just tuck in your edges using fingers and latex. You could use modelling tools if you've got them, it's a really good thing to do. You're just trying to smooth out this edges and create it a fairly even blend. The good thing is, if you end up going around and covering this entire area, it does not matter, just because you can cut it up at the end. If you put too much of a press down on this, you'll be able to see any extra latex that comes out. Keep doing this for a bit and you quickly end up something that looks a bit more like these. And then just, if you worry that you've got too much latex, dry it off. I mean, you could just wait for it to air dry if you're patient. You could probably use a hairdryer as my suggestion. Or you could be really, really cheating and just use a really, really hot fire hose to make it This is probably the most stupid suggestion, but I, again, my hairdryer's upstairs and it's a bit rubbish, so this works fine for me. So basically, what I've done and um, um, keep doing is done little tiny things. So you've got like a build up. If you're changing shape, then you just want to kind of keep layering and then put your shape in afterwards. As and when you feel like it's going to get unstable, put a new top coat over, make sure you push in, try and use your nails, I mean I haven't got many nails at the moment so it's not a problem if you haven't got long nails, you're just trying to reduce that slight disc shape that you have going. Um, in comparison, I know all the edges are a bit funny but by the time we've done another 100 layers, this is how you like to kind of look in comparison between these two. As you can see, these are unstable on this side. Traps it in and then just dry it between the layers. Right, so to get my kind of slight twist to it, I'm doing a dark fairy so I don't want too much of a round horn look. I don't want a stubby devil or dinosaur horn either. I've done a slight twist and I've literally done this by getting blue roll in different size strips. So I'm going to rip it across so I have like, lots of this. Dumped it in and created a long twist. So start off with 
happens to want to kind of give you face of where your helm will slide. So I'm going outwards, so starting from this side, wrap it quite low down so you've actually got the space and you don't want it to come off. If you start up too early and get a bit cocky, you will end up struggling with actually attaching it. So another piece and fold it. Sometimes if you can twist it, it's actually twisting, twisting really stronger, but it's sometimes hard to stick down. So your choice is to try and see how it works for you. If you start getting this uneven edge, see this is what we're doing when we have of making my beautiful scary fairy horns and basically I've let these dry overnight and now I'm going to start giving you a brief paint cover obviously depending on what theme you're doing and what type of horns you're doing changes your colour also a suggestion when you actually place them onto your face or your model's face or whoever's face preferably not your pet dog because they don't normally like that um, try and match the colours so all these colours around the edges I'm not too worried about how my colours blend because I will almost definitely be going over the top of the head right let's see how it goes 